What's up there workforce, Chris here with work to game and this is going to be a really quick money making guide and this one has to do with when you start to get a little bit more capital. So in our last guide we talked about how you don't need capital to start making money, maybe you don't have crafters and gatherers leveled, you don't have time to do that right now and it talked a little bit about how to make money if that's the situation you're in. Well now we have a little bit of money and we want to start flipping items. So the way you do this is there's, there's kind of two things. You can flip for instant profit if it's vendor and so you can go to like uh, Demi Materia, for example, on my server tends to drop below vendor quite a bit, these clear demis. And so at 200, um, you can, and then this one goes for 1,000, and then these go for 5,000. Now these 5,000s here, like right before I went live, um, actually dropped way below 5,000. They've done it again. Um, and I actually bought a stack of 40. Buyer, that's me. I bought a whole stack of 40, which means they didn't trade for having 196,000 gil. I literally paid Paid 196 and then I vendored it for 200,000 and I pocketed the 4,000 difference. There's a 200 gil fee here. I don't care because I'm making money uh, and I don't feel like teleporting right now. But this one, 4950, if there was a fee, I would lose my money. Uh, so 4950, I'm only making 50 per. So I'm going to make 50 times three. So I buy those up. And, and then to vendor them, you can literally go to the summoning bell or the closest vendor. It doesn't matter. And we can go to uh, sell items in your inventory. And then we can uh, have retainer sell items and off they go. Uh, and so that, that's gone. Like I just made that money. Um, and that, that took no effort. So that's the vendor. Now the other side you can try to do is you can try to flip things. Uh, and so flipping things is about seeing an opportunity in your market. Materia is a good start. Uh, because Materia is a pretty consistent demand. But keep in mind that Materia typically goes down in value because it's generated at a faster rate than people use it. So it goes down over a long time. So you don't want to get stuck with a ridiculous amount or it never sells. Uh, and so what we look for here is just look through um, like the DPS Materia seem to sell really often. You can try to do this with demand, but it tends to get a little narrower. Uh, in, in the high demand ones. And so like you can see here 42,000, 42,000, 43,000, 43,000, 48,000. So there's this huge spike right here. There's a 5,000 gil spike where there was a heavy undercut. Um, so Chaz here really didn't need to do that, but just thought it would make it move faster. And 48,000 is a typical price on my server. It's been as low as 40, so that's what you want to be aware of. But if I wanted to, I could buy up you know, these six materia and list them at 48,000. And as long as I got rid of all of them before the price dropped back down, I would make money. And so it takes a little bit more understanding of your market and you have to be willing to risk the amount you're playing with. So it might work better to start with kind of cheaper items until you kind of get a feel for, you know, how risky you're willing to be. Um, but materia is definitely something to keep an eye on. For example, you can do quick things like this. Uh, 1260. Somebody just listed that for 1260. Maybe they meant to put an extra decimal place on it. Maybe they wanted it to sell quickly. But that 1260, that that Materia 5 there was way below 13,000. Like way below. And so I'm going to list that right now and then make that profit. Um, so I bought that for 1260. And we can go down to, doesn't really matter. All my retainers are full right now. I adjusted all their prices this morning. So one of the things I do is I adjust all their prices, but then like, this was selling for a lot more. And then when I adjusted the price, it dropped it to something that's not even worth having listed. So I'll just return that to retainer. And then we'll pull this up. And I just start lowest to highest. So sometimes when I've been really active, I haven't been that active of playing this week. Um, my my total price on that right side will creep up. It'll be 2,000 and 3,000 and 7,000 and 10,000. So if it's below 10,000, I pull it off. Um, and sometimes it's stuff that's under 1,000 because I just haven't been playing much. So 13,000 will do 490. Uh, and the reason I do 490 is some people don't like when you undercut by one. Undercutting by a lot doesn't make sense. It's what allows us to make that much money. Um, so undercutting by one is a valid strategy. Undercutting by you know five or 10 when it's a price this big can make sense. Uh, if something's not selling and you've been the lowest price since last week, 
you can lower it by 100, lower it by 100, because odds are people have looked at that listing and said, nah, it's not worth that. So just keep lowering it until you find the price where somebody sells, but you wanna be as high as possible. So I could say 13,499 here, that is totally valid. Um, you know, I could also say 13,490, it's, it's just, do I care about that extra nine gill if that means that somebody buys the listing above me? Um, but I definitely shouldn't come in at 12,000 or 11,000. And the only time you would want to do stuff like that is these are all quantities of one, but like this quantity of five, that's never going to sell when I can get ones for cheaper because I don't want to get stuck with extra materia. Usually you're only using one or two materia at a time because you've just got a new piece of gear and you want to slot it. Um, a piece of gear doesn't typically take five materia. So uh, when you're selling large quantities of it, you have to be willing to move on the price. The other side of that is when you're listing individuals, you do not have to be the lowest price if the lowest price is for five or 10 of them. So if there's one listed at 14,000, but it, it requires that you buy a quantity of 10, you might be able to list yours for 15, 16, 17,000 as a solo because I would rather buy that one as a consumer than get stuck with a whole stack. Uh, today I bought a bunch of mate uh, piety materia because piety materia had this chunk of them that were selling for a fraction of the price of the other ones and I just drove the price up and as long as I get like three of these sold before the price drops back down, I'll actually make money on that transaction. If not, I won't. And so you have to either keep good notes to make sure that you wait for the price to go back up or you may just lose money for all of time on, on that individual transaction. Materia is just one of many examples. There's plenty of ingredients. Uh, one thing I would warn you about is if it sells on a vendor, it can be a more volatile market for the exact reason I put that guide out before. Those people didn't put effort in. They have an unlimited supply of it. So as long as it's selling, they don't care how much money they make and they will undercut the crap out of you. I am guilty of it. So you want to go ahead and you want to you know, go in here and sometimes I'll do this by like quantity um, because I find demand gets me into stuff that doesn't, it has really narrow margins in ore. And so I'll go in here and I'll say, okay, there's there's not a big gap there. Iron ore has a shop selling price. Uh, this one does not, 225. And it looks like if we bought up like maybe 30 or 40 of it, we could drive it up by 100. Does the market generate that? Yes, the market is totally willing to pay that price when that's the lowest price. Um, so if you were willing to spend whatever it took to get to this point, then you could go ahead and drive that up. Uh, it also moves fairly often, so we could absolutely go through that today. We can go look at the high qualities here and see what high quality is trading for. Um, high quality is up at 745. So does high quality justify 745? No, high quality, uh, maybe probably 600 so we could heavily undercut the the high qualities here but we bought them for 225 so we don't care now these vendor pre these delivery fees you want to keep track of this if these had all been Kugane I should go to Kugane but because it's just one and I'm trying to do it quickly for this guide I'm gonna go ahead and pay but I just paid 400 gil more than I need to just to show you guys kind of this quickly and and that means I have to make that back that's additional cost that was 100% avoidable um, 990 so now I'm spending even more so now I'm out 1500 of my margin plus another I just spent 2000 gil in delivery fees so if you're trying to flip like this that's a very bad plan I just showed you something you should not do now at 474 keep in mind people have to buy a whole stack of 99 so if we are at 474 or below we probably will be the item that sells so once again it doesn't matter all my retainers are full uh, sell items in your inventory and so if I'm willing to part with it in stacks of under so like birch sap not enough of it to be valuable so we can go ahead and say this and because these are stacks of 99 I can come in and actually match it at 474 and as long as I'm willing to maybe do like a stack of like 35 right then that becomes a more palatable choice. And I don't have to undercut them because I undercut them in quantity. Um, and then I can I can list another one for 35. So I can come in here, Ebony Log, return to retainer, put up again, and I can say 474, we can do 35 again, right? And so I just put 70 on the market, gave up two of my slots, but made that more palatable without undercutting them. Um, and so getting to know your, your market and getting to know what items sell, why they sell, maybe they're selling because they're the grand company turn-in, maybe they're selling because they're used for a leave, maybe they're selling because it's a consumable that's used by raiders right now. So getting to know why they're using it will help you understand when the price is gonna change. If Square announces that there's a new raid coming out, raid consumables will be on the rise. Um, and so getting to know kind of what's going on 
there will help you kind of play this market. So we're gonna go list these six. And because we pay like 225 a piece, we could go ahead and and just undercut um, just this guy at 745, we could list it at 744, but then we're only competing with the high quality market. So you can look through here and say, okay, these 99s go all the way up to 600. Um, and so if I come in at, let's say like 690, right? I've heavily undercut the high quality market, but now I'm starting to compete with parts of the regular market because I'm in a quantity of only six. Uh, and so that's way, way, way above the 200 that I bought those for. And so if that sells, I'll make 4,000 on that stack. That total stack cost me, what, 1,200, 1,400 gil. If I'd avoided the delivery fees, that'd be it. Um, and so, you know, it's about turning. It's about turning these items. And so will these sell today? I don't know. And, and are you willing to part with the capital in the meantime? Because I had to be willing to put up that amount of money. So I'm showing you guys this example, but you can imagine if you started filling your retainers entirely with flipped items, you could be investing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of gill in items, and you only make that money back when it comes back to you, if it comes back to you. Um, and so it's absolutely a little bit more of a gamble, but can be another great way to turn existing money into more money without gathering, without crafting, without doing anything. That is effortless. I did all of that right here. If I stand in the right spot, I can interact with the market board, I can interact with my summoning bell, I literally don't move. So it, it could not be simpler. Um, my name is Chris with work to game I hope this makes sense to you. Let me know down below. Uh, we could talk about kind of pricing and stuff, when you undercut, when you don't. I know there's a bunch of strategies out there and everybody has their pet peeve. So you don't want to make the customer's pet peeve active, but you do want to make as much as you can on an item. Um, sometimes lowering the price will make it sell faster if you're if you're making room for somebody to make money. Um, but oftentimes it won't. I'm, I'm going to buy the lowest. So if I need... If I need iron ore right now, right, and I don't want to go over to the vendor and buy it, I can type in iron ore and then I, I'm going to click on it and I need a lot of it because I'm going to make a whole bunch of ingots. Well, if this was listed for 30, but I needed like 300, I would buy the 30 and then I would buy the 38. And now that person who sold it for 30 could have made more. Um, so like this is a good, you know, so we'll look for like the same name twice here. So. Leo Ashford bought some for 39 and some for 43. That means this person could have made more per purchase. You know, like that there was no reason to undercut by that much. They could have undercut at 42 and Leo Ashford would have still bought it at 4.23 a.m. on March 31st. Uh, and so you want to kind of know like, when do I really need to undercut? By how much do I need to undercut? And really think about that. Once again, my name is Chris with work to game Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's me. Oh, well, if you don't know me, my name's Terry. I'm a beautiful Tyrannosaurus from Texas, and it just it doesn't get more country than that. I tell you what, I grew up in these parts. I was resurrected by a ghost, and that ghost told me that I needed to come out and hang out on work to games YouTube channel to tell everybody they should totally hit that thumbs up. Thumbs down, make Terry hungry. It makes me hungry. You hear me? Hungry. Anyway, Terry, just keep it keep it together. Keep, keep it together, Terry. All right, guys. So uh, with that doubt, that, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and hit subscribe if you haven't already to see more of me and my beautiful, my beautiful nose. Okay. Okay. All right. Good talking to you. I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you real soon. Terry, the Tyrannosaurus from Texas. <laughs>